good it is. Yeah. You know, just go. Yeah. Right. Bailey and I started a bet early in the season. I think Moab. Moab. And it was basically who's gonna whoever wins the points this year, whoever has the better season, is gonna force the other person to do something out of their comfort zone. I'd have to go rock crawling, rock climbing twice. He has to go to CrossFit twice, depending on who wins at K1 speed. Well, I'm already You're already winning, you just have to go to CrossFit once. Alright, I tried to pull that last one on you. my dad out on the first corner like he said but the, I think he's not gonna say see time to go racing Super fun, dude. It was a good time. It was. Well, that was an awesome race, you guys. I'm stoked we all did it. It was super fun. Jackson, three seconds a lap faster than you in your class. And passed the entire <laughs> passed field. Passed the whole field. Yeah. Bailey, you rocked, dude. That was rad. That was good. Scott, race. you got me at the end. That was awesome. Did you have a good time, Aaron? It was fun. All right, we had a blast, dude. Another good adventure. Hey, day one's pretty fun, huh? Yeah. All right. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Like and subscribe, you guys. Smash the like button. We'll keep racing go-karts for you. <laughs> Head into Red Line here next, uh, then Crandon and uh, rip, to, rip, to the rip to the Rockies. So follow along this episode. It's going to be a blast. See you guys out there. Now we're taking a tour here at Redline Oil and man, it, there's everything going on right now and it's just an awesome place to be. Where is the oil going into the bottle? Which one of these stages? It's a filling machine right here. Pretty awesome stuff watching them go from bottle to station to labels. The whole process is pretty awesome. One of the additives is really what kick-started basically Redline and propelled them. They were making great products, but they were a small company, and they made an additive that was for the diesels, and it was adopted by a couple of OEM manufacturers, and it propelled the company to like new heights instantaneously. I'm a beer drinker, so I love beers. I like how beers are, are made. We're like, say, Lagunitas, a small microbrewery started next to Budweiser, being the big oil company. We're not just buying an additive pack off the, off the shelf and putting it in and calling it a 530, a 540, or 550. We're building that additive pack, and that's what makes our product stand out above everybody else's. I think I just opened up Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory of Gear Oil, dude. It smells like gear oil. Woo! <laughs> Do you need a 55-gallon drum of two-stroke? Duh. What, is that two-stroke? Two-stroke. Two-stroke? Woo-hoo! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> You guys started with two-stroke race oil. It's been the smell that I remember since I was a little kid was Redline two-stroke. Whether it was a dirt bike or a go-kart or whatever we were racing, that was that was the beginning smell before a good time. Yeah, two-stroke was one of the products that we first came up with. 
uh, as a, with our chemistry. Um, been a huge seller that helped us uh, break into the synthetic oil world. And it's on the rise, right? Everybody's back to the T-strokes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Roy Howell. I'm the manager of product development of Redline Synthetic Oil. We're going to go out and, and take a sample from Jason's Ultra 4 race car. As you guys know, we got a new Ford power plant, and since we put it in there, we haven't ever really checked and seen you know, how everything's working. So we're going to check some motor oil right now and run it through the, uh, the crazy spectrometer over there. Looks perfect. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. But if not, we'll, we'll know the guy we'll, to fix it we'll if we'll it's know not. Yeah. I have not ever done this type of stuff, so it's pretty cool to see this. It's uh, Definitely a whole nother level. Okay, let's go in and, and check the viscosity. This is so cool. Did I see as you were walking from the truck to the parking lot, you took a little smell and you could. You know, well, it gives you an idea. idea. It gives uh -huh. you an idea of the fuel. You know, you can you know you can tell a lot. Quite honestly, you can tell a lot from the smell of a lubricant. Yeah. You know, you can tell if it's been heat damaged. You know, you can tell you know if there's excessive fuel dilution. So, you know, a little sniff, you know, for the train nose anyway, yes. you, know, you know, a little sniff tells you quite a bit. I mean, then you basically back it up with real tests. There is a shearing action that happens with all of the moving parts that kind of tear at the, at the lubricant. And we just want to make sure that the lubricant hasn't been sheared down. Now, you know, the advantage of the red lines is we don't really have, you know, a polymer in there that can shear. So we really shouldn't have any shearing action. But no shearing action for the shearer. No shears. <laughs> so I think over the last, you know, 15 years of racing King of the Hammers, my number one failure has been rear gears. I don't know about yours, but it's, you know, it's a tough toss up between transmissions and rear gears when you start talking about failures. It's just super hard to get anything to survive back there with the forces we put it through. And we're running stuff on coast sides, trying to get our drive lines up in the air. And, and we put these things through just a tremendous amount of load. The biggest savior I've had was that Redline listened to us and was trying to analyze what was going wrong and gave us some new products. And we've been working with Roy to try to test out new things for a couple of years, probably four years oh, now. Yeah, we've tried at least four years, new yeah. things on this. And we came up with something that we've now had for two seasons that's doubled our rear gear life. The ADW250 was just, you know, essentially, an you know, analyzing your problem and coming up with a synthetic solution that solved the problem and it appears to be working perfectly. We're racing two races now in a row on the same rear gear, which we were never doing before. You know, it was, it was hopefully making it through a race and, and babying the car to make it through a race. And now we're racing two races, so it's a At huge difference. the pace that we want to drive. Yeah, <laughs> which has increased over this period of time, mm -hmm. you know? So it's pretty cool. Now we're gonna go do a couple joy rides in the buggy and uh, have a little fun with some of their employees and go check out their warehouse a little bit too just to see what it looks like. My name is Diana and I'm on the marketing team at Redline Oil. What's about to happen here? I'm maybe going to die? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so uh, how was your first race car race? I didn't even open my eyes, so yeah, yeah. that was, I don't even I know how you drive. Too. Oh, I kept them closed too. That's our safe. Wow, yeah. I feel a lot more safe. <laughs> so uh, me and Jason are here at another Redline facility, and this is one of their uh, warehouses where they keep uh, finished product. And man, it is massive in here. I mean, we got some gear oil over here, some motorcycle oil over there. Ooh, I need that actually right there. I'll take one of those. Right, you gonna grab one of those boxes? How about I'll grab some of that? There's, here's Jason's little section, 8250, a little chain lube, some two-stroke. I got everything I need. Let's go. This is this is the CV grease that I don't want the world to know about, but apparently everyone's going to know because it's here at Redline. But I literally found Jason's boxes in this big warehouse. Isn't that crazy? It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is crazy. Hey, Jason! Marco! <laughs> I'm standing here amongst millions of gallons of Redline oil. <laughs> That's super cool. It's so cool. It's I mean, super cool. It's super, super cool. We're just finishing up here at Redline. Uh, it was an awesome trip. We learned so much about how they make the oil, what goes into it, the science behind it. 
We now know water's not actually wet, but you can make it wet with a little bit of water wetter. So all in all, it was a great trip. I'm heading to Crandon, you're heading to Rip to the Rockies, and it's gonna be a good time. Dude, that was so epic. How awesome is this? I can't wait to go show you guys a little bit of it. Let's go rip. I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't all been there, I promise. <laughs> we're above tree line, we're at 12,930 feet. We're on California Pass. Enjoying the view from the peninsula here, the point. And we're gonna head down towards Lake City for a hop on some single track. Like to go from doing Rip to Cabo a couple months ago and jumping on the bikes up here, you know, being at 10,000 feet and riding through the Aspens and, you know, just tight wood stuff was absolutely awesome. And what a great group of guys. What a, what a fun adventure. Woo! What a day. I'm stoked. Here for the 2021 Nitto National Championship here at the Crossbar Ranch just outside of Davis, Oklahoma. And it's been a great day of racing. I hope you all have enjoyed it just as much as we have. And Bailey Cole is physically sitting first in the Nitto National Championship. So we'll see how it shakes out. But Bailey Cole out of Temecula, California with Rock Royalty Racing in that top shelf Trent Fab 2C IFS machine. And he is on adjusted time in the ninth position. And look at that, a Yukon driver hitting the Yukon launch with a Yukon up there. That's perfect. <laughs> Perfect timing. Picture perfect. You guys are sitting first in the international points and it's gonna be down to the wire because Raul's having a strong race and it's a it's gonna be cutting it close. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at Raul and Von Gitten right now as, as the, the two top guys that, that we have to look out for based on where everybody is on track right now. So but regardless, it's gonna be a great season. You guys have had your ups and downs, and if you could end up at, you know, even even the top three would be really nice. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I mean, this last half of the season's been pretty rough for us. We've, we've kind of got kicked in the teeth a little bit, but we keep coming back for more. But look at that smile, everybody's having fun. So Sean, always a pleasure, good luck, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much. The race to watch right now is gonna be between Bailey Campbell and Bailey Cole. If Bailey Cole cannot get around Bailey Campbell, it looks like Vaughn Gittin Jr. may steal that national championship away from Bailey. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this shakes out. Bailey Cole is trying to make a last minute pass around. It looks like Cody Hardesty at the start finish line. So where is this gonna put Bailey Cole? After King of the Hammers, after all the different regional races, after today's race, there was a two point difference between first and second. Second place, your submarine commander, Bailey Cole. 
And in first place, the head fun haver himself, Mr. Vaughn Gittin, Jr. First of all, I wanted to say uh, thank you to all the drivers up here. I think uh, battled with pretty much every one of you this year, and it, it was a great year. So thank you all very much. And thank you very much to my awesome crew. I got Sean here, uh, does way more than any man should. Mark Rambo over here drives the, and gets the car to every race, so thank you very much. Ken's for sticking up with me for some reason, who knows. Yes. And finally, thank you to my dad for not only dealing with all of us dumb racers, but just being an awesome dad. <laughs>